Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Let's get started and look into the first article. The first article says, despite pressures, the rupee is remarkable resilient. There is another article on the Hindu which also speaks about the same issue. Let's gel it together and discuss as one single issue. This article here is speaking about rupees depreciation. What is the context? The Indian rupee has depreciated by around 7% against the US dollar. What are the reasons for the rupee depreciation? There can be internal factors. There can also be global factors. According to the author, there are five major reasons as to why there is depreciation of the rupee. The first includes widening current account deficit. What do we understand by current account deficit? We as a country will have a lot of imports and we also make exports as well. Exports are the ones where we are able to sell our goods and we are also able to provide services to multiple other countries. And at the same time, we also make a lot of imports as well where some goods which are not produced in India are imported from some other country. So if the imports are comparatively more than the exports in that particular case what we have is a deficit. So this deficit is called as the current account deficit. If the exports are comparatively more than the imports in that case what we will have is a surplus but if the imports are more than the exports in that case what we have is the current account deficit. As of now there is excessive current account deficit which means India has more imports than the exports. We are giving out more dollars and as a result what we have is the rupee depreciation says the author. The second is persistent risk of sentiment as a result of geopolitical tensions. When we speak about risk of sentiment what we have to understand is a concept. What is this concept? This happens to be risk on risk off. What is this risk on risk off? Let's say for example if everything is working out according to the expectations of the investors. So what do they do? They want to invest in a particular country. They see that the economics of that particular country, the macroeconomic credentials of that country is doing good. As a result, these investors will start investing in this country which is called as the risk on. Risk on basically means the macroeconomic principles according to the investors is good the market is doing good so they would want to invest in that country which is called as risk on so whenever the risk is perceived as low what we will have is investors who would want to invest in a country then what we have is called as the risk of sentiment what is this risk of let's say for example in a particular country there is instability there is political crisis as we are seeing in Sri Lanka there is economic crisis there is high inflation as well the political institutions are not working there is large scale corruption in that case the investors feel that the country will not give them any growth even if they make the investments they will not get the returns in that case where the risk is perceived to be high you have the investors who will take the money of that country in the present situation when you look at the geopolitical tensions that are occurring in multiple places world over one we have the Russian invasion of Ukraine what we also have is issues in China as well because of the pandemic and as a result the world is connected we are living in a globalized world and inflation has hit every other country as well inflation has also hit India as well so these investors who were investing in India because they felt that the returns were good now perceive that it is risk off which means that the risk is comparatively more so let's pull off the money so another major factor is geopolitical tensions making all these investors take their money off India and this happens to be the second reason. The third happens to be a strengthening dollar index. What do we mean by dollar index? Basically, it is the measure of value of the US dollar relative to a basket of foreign currencies. This has also increased as well, which is why the author says what we have is this particular scenario of the rupee depreciation. Continuous sell-off by the foreign portfolio investors have all put pressure on the rupee. As we initially discussed, whenever the investors feel that the economy is not doing good, the market forces are not responding in a positive way. In that case, the investors perceive that the market is not giving them returns. So they move back. They take their money. So when it comes to the FPI, we have the foreign portfolio investors who felt that the Indian markets currently are not doing good. So let's pull it off. And as a result, in the month of May and in the month of June, when you consider
consider on a cumulative basis more than 50000 crores was pulled off the indian stock market when these money that was once invested in the stock market is pulled off this means that there is lot of dollar that is going out leading to the depreciation of the money this happens to be the fourth reason and finally what we have is the dollar strengthening what is this dollar strengthening as we as i initially told you there is inflation in every country let's say for example we have it in united states of america we have it in europe as well we have it in japan as well most of the countries are witnessing inflation right now one of the ideas to control inflation is to increase the interest rate which is why we have the us fed reserve which has currently increased the interest rate in the united states of america so most of the countries are not able to withstand the inflation and similarly united states of america also has inflation as much as 9.1% in june 2022 so the us fed reserve decides that they have to increase the interest rate because they have increased the interest rate most of these people who have invested in the emerging markets they've pulled it off and now they have started investing in united states of america basically believe that this is a country where you would be able to get the Returns, it is safe to invest here and as a result they're taking off their money investing in united states of america because they perceive that the us dollar is going to appreciate which is why you have the people who are pulling off money from the emerging and the developing market and ultimately investing in united states of america these are some of the possible reasons as to why there is depreciation of the money in order to overcome all these issues what the reserve bank of india has been able to do is able to intervene in the spot and the forward foreign exchange markets and has even taken multiple issues as well but this article currently goes on to say that when you consider the depreciation in the past for example in 2008 and also in 2013 the fall of the rupee was comparatively more but in this particular period the fall has been comparatively less which is why the author goes on to say that despite pressures the rupee's remarkable resilience continues so depreciation has been relatively low compared with past crises such as the global financial crisis of 2008 where the rupee had weakened by over 20 percent between December 2007 and June 2009 and the taper tantrum of 2013 for seven months from the start of the crisis in May 2013 the rupee had depreciated by over 11 percent currently it is about 7 percent so comparatively rupee has seen a resilience says the author so the author goes on to say it is not only India which is suffering and it is not because of India's weak economics but it is because of the global geo politics we recently discussed on our cna as well that euro is almost equivalent to dollar right now yen is also suffering which happens to be the currency of japan and multiple other currencies world over are suffering so it is not to do with their weak economics but this is mostly associated with geopolitical tensions that is happening the world over what exactly happens whenever the rupee depreciates there are merits if the rupee depreciates and there are also disadvantages as well what are the merits when we speak about merits whenever the rupee depreciates what we would be able to increase is the exports so whenever the rupee depreciates the exports should increase but in this particular case the rupee has depreciated but we are not able to make exports to multiple other countries that is because of the market competitiveness where india's competitors south korea malaysia bangladesh so on and so forth these countries their currencies have also gone down which means there is more competition we are still not able to make the exports and at the same time the global demand has also dropped considerably if the demand was high we would have made exports but as of now the global demand is comparatively less so india is not able to make the export successfully is the first one what are the disadvantages as of now a weaker rupee is driving up prices of key commodities let's say for example coal oil edible oil gold thus ultimately inflating all the prices and what we have is increasing inflation in the country and the cost of some of the commodities 
increase have also increased as well and this also basically means that it discourages the foreign investors to come and invest in India and ultimately what we will have is less investment by these investors who want to operate in India. What are the measures taken by the Reserve Bank of India? As of now, Reserve Bank of India has liberalized foreign inflows into the country. Measures such as promoting trade settlements between India and other countries in rupee terms have been initiated. We did discuss in our CNA in the last week and we have also discussed the same topic in the economy this week. In this week lecture, kindly look into it. Offering high interest rate on fresh foreign currency non-resident and non-resident external deposits, a widening of investable universe of government and corporate debt, a relaxation of the interest rate, amount ceiling for external commercial borrowing plans among others have contributed to arresting the rupee slide against the greenback and in the near future the government could encourage some of the large market cap companies private and public sectors to be included in the major global indices such as MSCI and FTCE this will help increase the weight of the Indian equities in these indices compensating for the foreign portfolio outflows to some extent as investors are unlikely to be underweight on India. The government could also expedite India's entry into bond indices such as JP Morgan's Emerging Market Bond Index and the Barclays Global Bond Index. This will not only lead to forex inflows but also have a benign impact on the interest rates. These are some of the measures which can be taken up by the government of India. So now we have the Reserve Bank of India Governor Shakti Kandas who has stressed that while the central bank was committed to ensuring that the rupee found its level in line with its fundamentals, it did not target any specific value. It would intervene decisively to iron out any volatility or bumpy movements in the currency's exchange rate. So overall, even the rupee is expected to remain under pressure in the near term and this is because of global uncertainty says this article. It is this that we have to understand with respect to this article. Now let's look into the next article. This article says Russia-Ukraine seal grain exports deal. Let us try and understand what is this article all about. Ukraine and Russia are one of the world's largest exporters of wheat and sunflower oil. If you look into the data, Russia and Ukraine are top wheat exporters in the world. Wheat exports for the year 2020 in terms of dollar, what we have is top 10 countries. We have Russia at the top, followed by US, Canada, France and fifth happens to be Ukraine. So what we have is Russia and Ukraine who happen to be one of the top exporters of the wheat and the value that they export is as much as 7.9 billion dollars, 3.59 billion dollars and this was in the year 2020. For the year 2021, it has increased considerably and for the year 2022 as well, it has increased over a period of time. And when it comes to the sunflower oil exports, what we have is Ukraine which is one among the top ones again. Ukraine has made exports as much as $3.8 billion for the year 2019 followed by Russia, Netherlands, Argentina and Bulgaria. So what we have is Ukraine and Russia which happen to be one of the world's largest exporters of wheat, sunflower oil and others like the corn as well. The main destinations for the Ukrainian wheat for the year 2019 happen to be Egypt, Indonesia, Bangladesh, Turkey, Tunisia and in the year 2020, Lebanon also imported large-scale imports from these two countries as well. Some of the food that was also produced produced by Ukraine also ended up as food aid to a number of desperately poor countries around the world. But what exactly happened? Russia invaded Ukraine and as a result there was naval blockade of its ports and ultimately what we had is these shipments they were not able to move from Russia to other countries, from Ukraine, from the approach to other countries and many countries were not able to import the wheat and this ultimately led to food crisis world over and at the same time because there is crunch of wheat, crunch of sunflower oil, these countries will have to procure these items from some other country at a higher cost and this also stoked up the inflation in the country. Farm supplies 
सीच फर्टिलाइजर्स मिशनरी लोकल फार्म प्रोडक्शन एंड फूड प्रोसेसिंग फैसिलिटीज एवरीथिंग वाज डिसरप्टेड बिकॉज ऑफ द रशियन इन्वेजन ऑफ यूक्रेन एंड नव रशिया एंड यूक्रेन हैव साइंड अ लैंडमार्क डील टू अनब्लॉक द ग्रेन एक्सपोर्ट फ्रॉम द ब्लैक सी पोर्ट एंड ईज एन इंटरनेशनल फूड क्राइसिस सो दिस आर्टिकल करेंटली गोज ऑन टू से दैट रशिया एंड यूक्रेन सील द ग्रेन एक्सपोर्ट डील Why was the movement of grains halted till now? That is because both the parties did not trust each other. Russia accused Ukraine of failing to remove sea mines at the ports to allow safe shipping and insisted on its right to check incoming ships for the weapons, which Ukraine did not oblige to. Ukraine has argued that Russia's port blockade and launching of missiles from the Black Sea made any shipments unviable. Ukrainian authorities have also accused Russia of stealing grain from Eastern. Ukraine and deliberately shelling Ukrainian fields to set them on fire which is why till date we did not have exports both from Russia as well as from Ukraine now what we have is a new deal and according to the deal it makes provisions for the safe passage of the ship and ultimately goods worth as much as 10 billion dollars will be exported from Russia as well as from Ukraine to multiple other countries as part of this particular deal inspectors representing all parties who would be present at the Bosphorus state in Turkey will search the vessels entering and leaving Ukrainian ports to ensure that no weapons or soldiers are on the boat what is the significance of this deal as of now there are multiple countries which are suffering because they are not able to get imports from russia and ukraine in the near future they will not have so this will ultimately reduce the challenges of food insecurity and inflation and many people lakhs of people will now get all the imports from these two countries wheat sunflower oil fertilizer and multiple other humanitarian needs will now be reaching all these countries at lower prices added to it the agreement also plays a key role in providing hope for the re-establishment of peace in these two countries and at the same time there are multiple other countries which have also welcomed this this could be the probable first step that has been taken for the establishment of peace between both these countries it is this that we have to understand with respect to this article now let's look into the next article this article says union of the sanctioned what is this union of the sanctioned we have united states of america and the western countries which have imposed sanctions on multiple countries let's say for example russia we also have iran where sanctions have also been imposed by united states of america so these two countries now come together they have also discussed as well which is why it is called as union of the sanction so united states of america has imposed sanctions on russia united states of america has imposed sanctions on iran as well so these two countries have come together to challenge the authority of the western powers as well as united states of america so russian president vladimir putin recently met iranian leader in tehran for his first visit outside the former soviet sphere so russia and iran brought together by the opposition towards the west already have a strategic partnership especially in the area of syria so these two countries are already working out in syria and now the countries also signed a 40 billion energy memorandum of understanding where russia's gazprom would work with the national iranian oil company in developing energy fields and building lng projects and pipelines iran whose bet on the 2015 nuclear deal backfired after the us unilaterally pulled itself out of the agreement in 2018 has been keen on building stronger strategic and economic ties with china and russia so this basically means because united states of america is pushing them these countries have now come together to challenge the authority of united states of america as the nuclear talks is being resumed by the biden administration and there is impasse as well there is no improvements in this particular backdrop iran's ayatollahs have gone closer to russia says this article so this article all that you have to do is because of united states of america's sanctions all those countries were sanctions are imposed against them they have come together 
and they are having negotiations and discussions is what is this article all about now let's look into the next article this article says being sarna a fight to define tribal identity who are these sarnas sarnas are usually nature worshippers they usually worship the nature they worship the forest they worship the tree and they want to protect the trees so these are the tribal people who worship the nature and they have a concern which is what this article speaks about whenever we speak about census what exactly happens there are about six religions that is part of the census which are these six religions we have the hinduism islam christianity sikhism buddhism and jainism and other as well so whenever we are speaking about census these people come up to your houses they also ask you questions as well so one of the questions that they ask you is also to do with the religion as of now we have have just six religion and other but a tribal identity or the tribal religion as an independent one is yet not recognized under the census so these people are asking for a column where another religion identity or the sarna identity these are the tribals who worship the nature has to be categorized or a new provision has to be given in census 2021 is what is this article all about so basically as of now we have only six religions that are categorized in the census but going forward they are making a recommendation they are insisting that the central government comes up with an other religious identity in the form of sarna religious code so this religious code will basically be identifying something called as sarnas sarnas happens to be a tribal identity and these are the people who are worshipers of the nature the trees so on and so forth so they are making a request to the government of india the dear government of india you are coming up with the census for 2021 which will be a decadal census so also come up with a new religious identity tribal identity called as sarnas so all the tribal outfits in india those who are the worshippers of the nature they would be able to identify themselves as the sarnas who are the worshippers of the nature why are they coming up with it that is because there are many people who are converting to different different religions let's say for example you have a tribal person this tribal person if he is converting to a different religion he would not be getting any of the advantages let's say for example if you ask who is a hindu a hindu is a person who is a hindu he can be from the sikh community as well he can be from the buddhist community as well he can also be from the jain community as well so if there is a person who belongs to any of these he would be able to get the benefit of the sc and the st but what exactly happens if he converts to any other religion he would not be getting the benefits of the sc and the st community but what is happening of late they are converting to some other religion they are getting the benefits of the st community they are also getting the benefits of the minority community as well so it is in this particular backdrop some of the tribal says that they are taking benefits from both this should be avoided so these tribals go on to say that these benefits benefits should be only accorded to those who are the scheduled tribes and they should not be for those who have converted to the minorities are certain concerns added to it there are other concerns as well let's say there are tribals they are in the state of jharkhand or they are in the state of chatisgarh or any state what do they do for the sake of livelihood they start moving to a different state and when they move to a different state they are not categorized as the st and whenever there is census they do not have have this particular religion column as the tribal or the sarna so there are numbers which are not rightfully depicting the number of tribals says this article so basically identifying a sarna community a tribal identity is the need of the r says this article the article further makes a mention of different kinds of tribes one happens to be the nagesia tribe the kisan or the nagesia are the tribal group found in odisha west bengal and jharkhand they are the traditional farm and the food gathering people they speak kisan a dialect of kuruku as well as odia and sambalpuri then we have the oron tribe it is also called as kuruk oron or danga they are a dravidian ethnic group inhabiting the indian states of jharkhand west bengal odisha and chatisgarh they predominantly speak kuruk as their native language which belongs to the dravidian language family the language has been listed as vulnerable state in unesco's list of endangered languages then they celebrate sarfahu festival it is the 
tribal festival celebrated across the Jharkhand region and marks the beginning of New Year. It is celebrated by the Oran, the Munda and the Hof tribe of the Jharkhand region and Sarhal basically means worship of the trees and being close to the nature. These tribes start the Sarhal festival with the worship of the trees and other elements of the nature. Now let's look into the next article. This article says display tricolor at home from August 13 to 15 PM urges the people. This article is important from the preliminary examination point of view. Why? That is because on 22nd July has a special significance in our history because it was on this day in 1947 that our national flag was adopted says Prime Minister of India Narendra Modi. So he says sharing some interesting nuggets from history including details of the committee associated with the tricolor and the first tricolor unfurled by Pandit Nehru. So what is that we have to remember? We have to remember that 22nd July of 1947 is when we adopted the national flag. The version of the flag closest to the current one came into existence in 1923. It was designed by Pingali Venkaya and had saffron white and green stripes with the spinning wheel placed in the white section. It was hoisted on April 13, 1923 in Nagpur during an event commemorating the Jallian Wallabha massacre. The resolution to adopt the tricolor as the national flag of India was passed in 1931. On July 22, 1947, the Constituent Assembly of India adopted the Swaraj flag as the national flag of sovereign India with the Ashoka Chakra replacing the spinning wheel. And remember, from the preliminary examination point of view, the ratio of width of the flag to its length is 2 is to 3. This can be very important from the preliminary examination point of view. Now, let's look into the main practice questions. What are the measures taken by the Reserve Bank of India to slow down rupees depreciation? Next question. Discuss the significance of UN backed grain export deal signed by Ukraine Russia. Please write all your answers on the comment section, peer review and do give positive feedback to your friends answers. So this is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.